now. Hello everyone, my name is Malik L. Train and I'm the host of Health Awareness Talk for Sir Broadcast or WSUR. Uh, today I have Arm Palm Master Dale Dugas. He's also a, a licensed acupuncturist um, living in Tampa, Florida. Uh, he's, we are going over today in if you catch a cold, what exactly what you need to do for it or what do you need to do in order for you not to have a cold. Hey Dale, how you doing? Doing good. How is everybody? Uh, super, thank you. All right, I mean, you are acupuncturist and everything, so I'm kind of interested in how, from an Eastern perspective, uh, how do I keep my immune system up so I don't get sick? And if I do get sick, what to do? Can you help us with that? Well, first and foremost, you know, to keep your immune system in tip-top working shape, you want to try to lower the stressors in your life. In other words, you do not want to have high stress levels. This will cause a reaction that causes a cascade you know, throughout your whole immune system and then your immune system gets lowered and then you will catch whatever is coming down the highway. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're seeing a bronchial, a big bronchial bug and a big GI bug going around Tampa, Florida where we live. My wife got sick. She hadn't been sick in 15 years. She got pneumonia because the bronchial thing got so bad, you know, it turned into pneumonia on her so she had to go, we had to treat her. But anyway, you know, looking at colds and flu, we look at it a little differently in Chinese medicine, and we look at it in terms of heat and in terms of cold. And we also talk about wind. So wind is a pathogen in Chinese medicine. This is how you catch a cold. Your body, your immune system, your shield wasn't very strong, so it got thin, and somehow wind cold or wind heat got into the body through your pores. And now you're having a reaction to that. In other words, if cold, if being in a cold room makes your symptoms worse, you have wind cold. You know, you have a mild fever, you have chills, you know, you feel cold, you can't warm up. So we call that wind cold. So if you have that situation, we want to warm you up. We mm -hmm. want to, in, in, you know, ingest or in, in, inject heat into the healing paradigm for you. Mm -hmm. Now, we also have wind heat. A lot of people have a high fever. You know, they're red. They're sweating, you know, they're just so sick, you know, and it's more like, you know, more like a virus or the flu, you know, where you see that, you know, not, you know, colds, colds don't usually have fevers and things like that, but the flu always has a fever and certain symptoms. So anyway, looking at that, if you have a heat situation, we want to cool you down. So I actually will bleed acupuncture points on your thumb and index finger. Four points, right at the, right at the corner of the nail bed. I'll take a lancet and I'll poke a hole and actually push and drain blood and the blood I drain from these two fingers will be very dark and a little bit thicker than you know a regular blood it, it shows you that the heat that's invading your body is causing your blood you know to actually uh, you know get gooey for lack of a better term it's the heat is causing a reaction right. of your blood to slow down mm -hmm. that's why you don't feel good you've got aches and pains you know you've got you know decrease in ability mm -hmm. to do anything you know you're you feel rotten Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, we do acupuncture first, usually, you know, uh, but of course we don't catch everybody in the early stages. They've had a cold or they've had this issue for a few days and they come to see us. Well, then we want to use herbal medicine and herbal medicine, there are different formulas for colds and flu. You know, do you have a sinus cold? You know, do you have a chest cold? You know, a stomach bug? It, it covers, you know, the formulas cover the wide range of you know, what are we looking at? What are your symptoms? They're always, you know, Chinese medicine is always based on symptoms. It's not the disease we treat, it's the symptom. You know, we want to mitigate those, system, those symptoms as soon as possible. Okay, that's super. Uh, let's go back towards the bleeding of the fingers, of the thumbs and index. Uh, yep. When you go do that, is there any way that we can uh, get rid of the heat or anything, like put some dit dye on it or whatever? Uh, you could you could try that. A lot of times, what we'll do is, uh, you know, people will put cold cloths on the head, or they'll put you know a bag of ice or something behind, the, you know, behind the occiput. Mm -hmm. Be careful with ice; it could be really cold. You can damage your skin. But wrap it, you know, you, to do that, people will put ice on the wrists, the ankles, and the back of the neck. That can bring down a fever. You know, we, we bleed in Chinese medicine. That's the way. But we also sometimes will give you a formula with cooling herbs to try to. You know, or herbs that will open up your pores to make you sweat the heat out. Okay. 
what happened? How did your shield goes down? How does your shield go down though? For well, a lot of people, you know, they're not sleeping well, and that's the, the that's usually the first and foremost problem. Is people tell me, well, I don't sleep enough. I have trouble getting to sleep, staying asleep, and so what happens is the body is unable to recharge, to reset, to heal. You know, you heal, you do your healing when you're sleeping. So when you come to see me in the acupuncture clinic and I put needles in you, nine times out of ten, you know what happens? You fall asleep because your brain is telling you. Hey, wait a minute. You need to go. You need to go to sleep so I can do this. You're, you know, you want pain relief. Okay. We don't do that when we're conscious. We do all the recharging and the rebuilding when we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're not sleeping, you're decreasing the ability of your body to deal with stressors. Mm -hmm. You know, life, work. You know, the the the, the kid, You know, the kids. You know, kids are great, but kids screaming all day long they make your nerves go. You know, a little haywire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter, you know. Hey, they're cute, but you know, yelling the same thing repetitively a thousand times. Yeah, it, it, it you, it's gonna you know bother somebody. You know, the dogs barking all day long. Hey, stressors. Okay, so the so number putting and you know, also a lot of people don't wear hats. They don't dress properly for the weather, so they go out and get exposed to what? They get exposed to a draft. Mm -hmm. They get cold. They get hot. Or maybe they were working out at the gym, and rather than take a shower and get cleaned up and put on dry clothes. They're still sweating, and they go outside, and before they get in their car, they get cold, mm -hmm. or they get hot. You know, again, depending on your symptoms, you either got wind cold or wind heat. So, bundle up, cover your head, wear a scarf. You know, wear some gloves. Don't expose your skin to the wind in the winter time. You know, people usually get sick in the winter time. You know, because why? You know, the weather's not very pleasant. You're dealing with you know snow, ice, all that kind of stuff. Not down here in Florida, but in other places, people. The stress, the the emotional or the mental stress is much more than their physical stress, and they get sick. Their mm -hmm. bodies, you know, can't deal with the stress, so they they, you know, they get invaded, for lack of a better term, by some kind of pathogen. And you know, and again, it's either cold or hot, mm -hmm. depending on you know what symptoms do we see, and then we treat accordingly. You know, again, treatments are always tailored to the person. It's never cookie cutter. Everybody gets the same thing. It's what do we see? We treat what we see. So you're okay. always going to hear that from an acupuncturist. We treat what we see. Wow, could you get that, Robert? It was his um his okay. All right, it just it cleared out. Okay, so what happens is is that when we uh anytime our body is exposed to some type of shock, our immune system goes down. Kind of like that. Not that the, the immune system goes down, but it takes a hit, and it kind of you know. Think of it as like levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, it lost a level, and it lost a level. Eventually, it's going to get to a point where it doesn't have enough power to defend the body against, you know, pathogens trying to get in. Because, you know, daily on a daily basis, we're being exposed to various things. You know, things in the air, um, things you touch. People that live in live in large cities, and they, you know, they they use public transportation. Mm -hmm. You're touching the subway. You know, you're sitting in that seat. You're touching that strap, that pole. You're rubbing against other people. You're being exposed to various things throughout your whole day, from the minute you wake up to the minute you get in bed. Super. Uh, yeah. You know. In order to increase your immune system, I've heard that people take uh, uh, hot, cold, uh, hot, cold showers or whatever in order for yep. them to. Uh, this is before you actually do get sick. In order to yeah. increase your body's ability to be able to take the shock or uh, to go yep. through the different yep. movements and stuff like that of the seasons. Uh, what do you think about that? It's It's been practiced in pretty much every culture throughout time. You have people that do practices to strengthen the body. And by hit, hitting your body with cold water, it causes a reaction and your body then responds to that reaction. Um, excuse me. So what they're doing is their their body is being put in a position to deal with something very quickly. It's the fight or flight response. And because you're not running away, your body then goes, "Oh, okay, I know what you want to do." You know, you want adrenaline, you want, you know, increased blood circulation. You want you know, to be able to deal with this. And then over time, your brain remembers that, and you actually make a neuron. You know, so it's all about you're actually making a memory cell mm -hmm. in your brain mm -hmm. about this reaction. And then over time, your body strengthens itself because it goes, "Oh, that's nothing. I, <laughs> you you must be joking." You know, in other words, that cold doesn't bother you mm -hmm. because you've exposed your body over time. And and that talks about the word kung fu. Kung fu doesn't mean martial art. It means a skill acquired over a long period of time through practice. So by practicing what you're doing over a long time. 
you get better at what you're doing. Exactly. Now, the um, this type of training is just like the arm palm. It's just not. It's something that happens overnight. It's something that they do over the years, both with warriors and also for athletes who has to go to uh, play in different states where the weather can yep. be dramatically hot or it can be dramatically cold. Be cold, snowy, rainy. You got it. Yeah. Exactly. And for the average person who moves from one environment to the other without any type of proper conditioning. Uh, such as that they have a tendency to be sick and therefore they can't perform out on the field so they would use to extreme they'll take a, a extreme cold water and they'll take yeah. a shower or take a bath and they will immediately go into a hot bath or a hot yeah. shower or whatever yeah, back and forth stuff. very quickly exactly yeah. in order to uh, build their I don't know if it's building their immune system or is it building the, uh, building the ability to take shots? I, I, I would look at it as an ability to train progressively the body's ability to deal with shock. In other words, the cold water, you know, you're in the hot shower, then you turn the hot off and just, you know, roll it over to the cold setting, and then, it, boom, it's cold. You know, your body's going to react by, you know, everything's going to contract, and, you know, you're going to, oh, my God, this is freezing. Well, over time, your, your body, the tissues, again, we're putting stress on the body. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at anatomical strengthening of tissues. By putting cold water on the body, you're having a physical reaction. And so that reaction over time is going to, your body's not going to, you know, you're, you're going to get hit with cold water and go, oh, okay. You're, gonna you're not going to blink. You, you're not going to have the same reaction because your body is now has the ability to deal with that amount of, you know, stress that would cause a normal person to have a bad reaction. Mm -hmm. Or to get a uh, lowered immune system to where that they uh, allow those pathogens to get in to get them sick. Yeah, because they're not doing anything and they're not they're not kind of training. It's it's almost like a training. You're 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 causing such a you know violent reaction one way or the other that the body has to respond and say, hey, I need to deal with this. I have to adapt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You adapt to, to you know so that doesn't bother you. Well, if you adapt, guess what? Your immune system is adapting and it's saying, nope, that's okay. That's not bothering me. You're not going to get in. You're not going to make me sick. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it's great training. For some, it actually, it's not so good. So again, it, it based on the person, you know, um, some people, that kind of training makes it worse. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they yeah. have a cold problem, and dumping cold water on them causes their cold problem to exacerbate. So there are, you know, again, if that bothers you and you, you hit yourself with a bucket of cold water and you get a migraine, don't do it. <laughs> okay. It shouldn't cause a migraine. You might get like, a, whew, you know, that the reaction of jumping in a cold water and your body contracts, you know, and, and genitalia, you know, almost retracts up into your body and, you know, you pull your shoulders up and you pull your hands in. That's the common reaction is to, mm -hmm. you know, oh, my God, that's freezing. Right. Know? But can't and you then, just warm the water up just a little bit, like by 10 can, degrees? You can, and you know, but for the real diehard people, you see them, they're out in nature under a waterfall. Mm -hmm. I actually have a photo of me in Japan with some friends. I can't show you it because we're naked. <laughs> the waterfall was next to a hot spring, so we mm -hmm. were in the hot water, and it was heaven up to our necks in mm -hmm. you know volcanic hot you know water. And there's a waterfall, so we go to the waterfall. Oh my God! Ah! Oh. But then, hot pool waterfall, hot pool waterfall, dude. It was so hot in the pool. It's so cold. It, the merging of it was just. It, it really just. I don't know. It, it brought on like a. You know, a meditative state. Interesting. You know, it was just in the moment there, you know, because the shock of the cold was so boom, and then the heat would just dissipate it. Mm -hmm. So oh, you get cold, and then you no, know, and the, the the this pumping action, and all of a sudden, you know, you get this increase of blood in your brain, and you know, you feel wonderful. Interesting. You know, so it's 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 interesting training. The Japanese did it. You know, the Chinese would do it. Certain Taoists would do it. Certain Indian. Romans. You know, again, early in the morning, hit yourself with cold water. It was a training of, you know, willpower. Right. But not just willpower. You're training the body to, you know, accept that kind of abuse. And mm -hmm. if you do, you know, and some people do standing meditation, you know, what they call qigong. And they do mm -hmm. the qigong. Mm -hmm. They do standing mm -hmm. qigong. Some have moving qigong. But people that do qigong, that will help prevent from getting sick. Why? Because that small amount of movement or no movement, but the relaxation will cause an immune response in the positive. Why? Because you're lowering your cortisol levels. Your cor you know, the stress hormone, when you learn to relax and you do qigong, qigong is going to lower your blood pressure over time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It doesn't matter the system. It does not matter. Whatever program you do, your blood pressure, your stress, your cortisol. We'll get mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. affected in a positive. In other words, it will lower. And if you have lower stress hormone, lower tension, your body can function at, at a better optimal level with less stress. So mm -hmm. it's what we want. Now, Sorry about the light, guys. It's okay. It's a ghost. <laughs> All right. So when we're looking at the cold hot there, uh, the cold hot therapy, like I'm, I'll tell a lot of people if they just start with it, I'm not talking about extremely extremely hot or extremely extremely cold. I'm talking yeah. about to point that you can tolerate it comfortably. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning, do it comfortably. You know, it's it's great in the shower. You can play with the heat. Mm -hmm. Slowly turn off the the hot. Introduce more cold. You know, most people have a controller, or some exactly. kind of controller. And then you've got total control over it in the shower. You're not, you know, you're not splashing water around everything. Ooh. Oh, and I'm sorry, guys. It's cool. You can leave it like that. Yeah, but um, yeah. So we look. It's not you just automatically do something that's extremely hot in the beginning or something that's extremely cold in the beginning. Like you no. don't get up, you don't wake up one day and decide to run a, a run, decide to run a marathon and you never ran one before or try to break coconuts and you never broken them before you always start small yes, you know always so, start yeah. small and slowly increase over time right safe progressive you, you you'll minimize your injuries by doing something safe and progressively over time that's why if you are a cold or if you are a hot natured individual your body will gradually adapt to it to be able to take stress over a period of time so that way if you are here in Charlotte and then you have to go to Chicago or Minnesota or someplace somewhere it won't hit your system as hard and you're less likely no. to get sick so no. that's the whole purpose of this uh, training is today is learning different methods and different things that yeah. you can do in order to enhance your immune system in order that number one you don't get sick and number yes. two if you do get sick what to do so we know that the uh, blood pu pulls up or thickens in the uh, in your thumb and your forefingers. Uh, could you also utilize any act type of uh, acupuncture? Uh, not acupuncture, but acupressure on those things. You could try, but I don't know the the efficacy of just you know stimulating that acupuncture point. We're we're actually to the point where the heat. We're trying to drain the heat, mm -hmm. and you drain heat from the body by sweating by urinating and by defecating. So we want to stimulate all three of these actions. We want you to sweat, pee more, and poop more because that's how you drain heat out of the body. So we do at certain acupuncture points, not just on the fingers, but at the wrist, at the elbow, at the knees, and by the ankles. And we, you know, put these needles in and we rotate them. And hopefully this response by the body will be to sweat, to induce bowel movement and to induce urination okay so that you get rid of this heat that's how our body you know we self-regulate but what happens is the hypothalamus is you know where you, where we regulate if the hypothalamus and the body gets affected by a cold or a flu all of a sudden your, your body goes into defense mode and it heats up why your body knows there's something inside trying to take over you know we're getting invaded the defense mechanism is to increase the temperature of the body so that you kill the invading bacteria or virus. Mm -hmm. So if we have a strong immune system, that reaction doesn't hurt us. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, we clear it out, we're fine, you know. But then what happens is that fever goes up and then it doesn't go away and it stays and we're having, you know, guess what? We're not dealing with it. And your body, you know, your body's not, it, it's, it, it's stuck on a loop. You know, you get stuck on this fever loop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it's not mm -hmm. very good. It's very dangerous. You know, having a fever over an extended time is not good for the brain. You, it can cook. That's why mm -hmm. a high fever over a long time is very dangerous. You have to, you know, seek, you know, don't be afraid if your fever spikes very quickly to get yourself to a medical facility because, you know, acupuncture herbs are great. But, you know, I have a, I, I've got a background as an EMT. And emergency medicine, you know, hey, if you're sick and it, it spikes or you get very ill, you want to get yourself to the nearest medical facility as possible. That's true. You know, what what it, is it, the definition of a fever? A fever is, you know, an increase of basal body temperature. So you you have a thermometer, you know, whether you put it in your mouth, you know, under your arm. They've got these thermometers now that scan your your temple, mm -hmm. and you know take a very accurate temperature and in other words the temperature of your body is you know within a few degrees below or above 98.6 mm -hmm. some people run cold mm -hmm. and then some people run hot mm -hmm. 
I run a little warm. I'm always, I'm like 90, you know, I'm like 99. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I run a little warmer. So a fever for me is something over 100, 101. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're 98 or if you're 96 and a, a fever of 100, that's a significant fever. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's go over a person who's hot and who's cold. So if uh, uh, the normal temperature for someone is wet, yeah, well, your normal temperature is your normal temperature, so it's whatever your baseline is. Okay. Um, and then basically, you know, again, some people run a little colder, and then some people run a little hotter. That's just their baseline. When you come in and you're sick, I'm going to ask you, you know, what's what? What are you feeling? Are you having fever? Is it a big fever? Are you, you know, you sweating through your clothes? Is it a little fever? In other words, you know, you feel just a little warmth. You know, some people it, the fever's all day. Other people, it's like a, it, it comes on only at night. When the sun goes down, their fever kind of perks up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a correlation to that. So we see that again, and that tells us something. And then we, again, use that information accordingly, whether we're going to give them an herbal formula or we're going to use acupuncture as a protocol. I like to use both when people have colds. Um, you know, and there's, there's other things we do too. There's, you know, we do scraping with a spoon. We, it's called gua sha. And mm -hmm, we actually mm -hmm. put a lubricant on your upper back. And we'll scrape the areas between your neck and your scapula down to about mid thoracic, and try to again what release the heat, mm -hmm, which we're mm -hmm. we're scraping the skin with this porcelain spoon, mm -hmm. so that the heat comes up. We open up the pores and we release this, you know, heat pathogen. Mm -hmm. We release the heat mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And of course, it looks like people were in a street fight. You know, their skin is bruised and you know red and irritated because we took to, we took this porcelain spoon and the edge of it. And we scraped it in areas and we scraped it until the red has come up through the skin. Mm, interesting. Oh yeah, the scraping technique, wash out. You know, I, I just use my hand. You know, because I've got these crazy strong knuckles, so mm -hmm. I don't need a porcelain spoon. I'll just scrape people with my hands. So you're not you know, worried about the pathogen being absorbed into your skin? No, it's you know I'm not opening the skin. There's no blood involved. So mm -hmm. whenever there's blood involved, of course, you know I, I put gloves on. I'll mm -hmm. use a face shield because you don't want to be you know hit with blood spatter. Mm -hmm. You know it's just universal precautions. You assume anybody in your office is you know is a carrier for whatever, and so you mm -hmm. treat that accordingly. You know, you just know if you're going to bleed somebody, you, you use protection. There's, you know, there's a protocol involved. There's a clean protocol. They teach it to us through school. You know, this, it's a sterile procedure. You're, you, you know, you're using something sterile to poke a hole in somebody, mm -hmm. you know, and either take blood out or put a needle in. And, you know, if we're, if we're doing gua sha, there's no blood involved, but you're going to pull up a lot of heat through the skin, you know, get some petechiae, petechiae, these little tiny red or purple dots that mm -hmm. can appear on your skin. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's just heat. So that's a good sign. Huh, interesting. So these little purple dots that actually come through the skin from guac. You can see purple dots, you know, and it's like red. It, it looks like, you know, if you rub your arm too long, you get like a red mark. It's, uh -huh. it's actually blood that's trapped in your tissue because the blood has come up from the irritation. It caused an increase in circulation in the area, and then your constant rubbing actually trapped the blood in your tissue. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it's a bruise. Okay, interesting. A, a form of bruise, a form of hematoma. Now, you know, or it's, it's a blood clot. So, again, coming back, are you hot? We're going to cool you down. Are you cold? We're going to get rid of the cold, we, you know, because cold likes to stay in your body. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you're cold, we're going to give you herbs that heat you up mm -hmm. and then drive out the cold. Mm -hmm. If you're hot, we're going to give you herbs that drive out the heat. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, we, we don't want you to deal with these with these situations. We want you to get back to whatever baseline is you. Okay. Okay. So, again, so, it's customized. We cut. You know, what's what's wrong with you? You know, uh, is it hot, cold? How long has it been happening? You know, are you you know, is there any mucus involved? You know, we, we there's a whole slew of questions I ask somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, okay, boom, here we go. We're going to do this. I'm going to do this protocol. And usually, it's a combination of hands, arms, legs. And then ear points, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it causes an overall systemic response where, hey, it, it lowers that fever. It helps you get better. I give you some herbs, too, because the acupuncture and the herbs go great together when you're dealing with a cold or a flu. Okay, that's super. Uh, getting a yeah. little bit just off the topic, Dale. If a person sure. runs, over, uh, a, runs over a basal thing like they normally run hot, does yep. that person tend to like warmer weather or colder weather? Usually tend warmer. If you're if you run warm, if that's your baseline, then things that are warm are gonna make you happy. So okay. being in the hot doesn't bother you, you know. Um, but 
what if the warmth bothers you? You know, okay. You know, then do you have a warm condition or a heat? In other words, you go to a sauna, you, you get in a sauna, and it really just it gives you a headache, a horrible headache, or you know, you, you feel it makes whatever pain you have exacerbate. Mm -hmm. Then you have a hot problem. Okay, so you you are uh, you a person? You, you your basal thing is you usually run hot, right? I just run hot. Some some people do. Women do too. There, there's people that have low blood pressure, and their basal temperature is just slightly elevated than others. There okay. are some people who are slightly decreased from this supposed 98.6. Right, right. You know? So so you you've got leeway on both sides. You know, you can you can run a little hotter, run a little cooler, and that's that baseline. You know, that's the window of everybody's temperature. That's true. Where are you originally from again? I'm from New England. I'm from Massachusetts. That's where I was born and raised. It's but I spent cold time over in there, Indiana. Right? I've lived over in uh, northeastern Japan. Uh -huh. I've lived in uh -huh. Europe. Uh -huh. You know, and then now I live here in Florida. Florida is right now is very dry, mm -hmm. and it's it's interesting because I'm seeing people have nasal problems and coughing mm -hmm. because their lungs are affected by the dry weather, and so they're having a reaction. Okay. So lots of nose and, and coughing right now. So what I'm trying to figure out is if a person runs hot, what would be the ideal place to live? What did, like you run hot, so evidently living in some place to be Florida would probably be ideal for someone of your constitution. Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on does it make you know are you comfortable in there? And, and a lot of people, you know, they don't. You need to spend some time where you're moving to. Um, I've been to Florida a few times, so I know, you know, I know the heat. My family has been here. My parents live here. My older brother's here. Uh, my wife, uh, my sister-in-law's here. So a lot of people have been here, and they're acclimatized to the weather. Mm -hmm. I just moved down a year ago, and it's been very interesting because I'm used to, you know, living in the cold. So this is like, you know, I got the window wide open right next to me, mm -hmm. and I've got an overhead fan on because it's like 70-something degrees, and I'm just, it's dry and cool. But... If I'm in the middle of the cold, yeah, it doesn't bother me because I run hot anyway. So being out in the cold doesn't bother me. But heat, like wicked heat, like you know, going over to Phoenix, Arizona, you know, in August or July, that, that that's too much. You know, Texas, mm -hmm, Western mm -hmm, Texas mm -hmm, in the summertime, mm -hmm. that's too much, and that bothers me. I it, I overheat in hot, hot places. Right. So according Florida's to Florida's not that hot. I think Texas and Arizona, you know. San Diego, the desert gets a lot hotter. It's just, but it's dry. The dry, the dry heat seems to bother me. Okay, so the, um, what I'm talking about as it relates to the video, it may be conducive for certain people who have certain yeah. body constitutions to find a particular environment where their immune system uh, does a lot better. Yes, there are people who have to, you know, they have to move because they're alert. You know, they can't live in a damp area. I gotta right. chime in here. Damp oh, areas, hold on, hold on. a lot of mold. Mold hold bothers on. them. So guess what? The damp bothers your problem. Ahead, it would be better for you to live someplace dry. If they used to send all the TB patients, you know, people that had tuberculosis, is this damp, you know, you got liquid and blood in your lungs and you're coughing it up and you're dying because you can't breathe. Where'd they send them? They sent them to like LA, San Diego, mm -hmm. Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas because it was drier. Mm hmm than being in the northwest or the northeast, because both, both, both northeast and northwest are wet. Mm -hmm. You know, northeast, of course, we get snow and ice. Northwest, yeah, a little bit more ice, more rain, sleet, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They get snow too, but it's up in the mountains. But anyway, it's funny. The the south southeast and southwest are hot. Southeast is a little more wet. Southwest is a little drier. So again, TB. They used to send people to clinics. Why? It would actually help them in the long run. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, most people don't. They don't listen to this kind of stuff, and you know, it, they're going to live where they're going to live. Yeah, that's true. Robert, what was you saying? Yeah, Dale, I was going to ask. See, yeah, usually I run hot, but I, I have high blood pressure, which I consider normal, but the doctors yeah. consider abnormal. But it's been that way well, all my life. Yeah. Have you have you had this your whole life, or yeah. is it just something recently that no, you, the doctors are life. telling you you've got elevated blood pressure? Yeah, and it, it runs pretty high. I mean. Okay. But um, but something I had all my life. You know, it's funny. If you've had it all your life, then that that might be your baseline. But again, they're always trying to think of prevention. You know, again, prevention versus curative. So they're looking at whatever signs and symptoms now, and they're thinking they want to treat you so that they'll you know that they can decrease that number. They're, you know, and yeah, again, you can do this naturally. There are things to do naturally, and I I've lowered my blood pressure. You know, I've lowered my cholesterol with herbs, with acupuncture. I see a lot of patients for stress reduction. And when you help reduce their stress, guess what? You Comes reduce down. their blood pressure as well.
Yeah. There is an active correlation. So if you're high stressed and you know you're running around like a like a crazy person, your blood pressure is usually going to be affected. Right. So if you get those stressors down, or the, in other words, you help the body adapt to those stressors so that your cortisol levels go down because you're used to it. Guess what? Hypertension. Hypertension is 100% avoidable. Mm-hmm. It's 100% treatable. Why? You've got to look at what you're doing to cause your stress levels to go up, and you got to get them down. That's true. Robert, uh, how much sleep do you usually get on a normal day? Oh, Lord, on a normal day? On a normal day. Uh, yeah, good question. I, I ask every patient, you know, how do you sleep? How many? How long? How many now, hours? Based on Friday and Saturday, that's less. But Okay. Yeah. He says six hours. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually the norm. When you when you talk to people, they, they age, you know right? five to six is like norm, and, and very few people get eight to twelve. Yeah, you know, I usually get six or seven, and you know, on the weekends I try to catch up a little. And Sundays, you know, I, you know, early in Sunday, that's my one day off. Okay, turn the phone off, stay in bed for at least. I try to stay in bed for one extra hour, make mm-hmm. it like a treat. You still wake up the same time as normal, you even, even though oh, yeah, you know you don't up, have to get but up. I'd say you know what, I'm gonna sit in bed, I'm gonna read, I'm just gonna chill, you know. Okay. Or I just kind of, or I just sit there and I do like a like meditating, you know, and just run through stuff, you know, make lists in my head. What do I have to do today? You know, I got to right. do my laundry. You know, dun, dun, dun. hey, I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be on the radio show with you guys later. You know, so this morning mm-hmm. I was thinking, mm-hmm. I was just kind of thinking, mm-hmm. hey, what mm-hmm. am I gonna do today? You know, yeah. I had a couple of students on Skype. I had some orders, some herb orders to get together, and then you know we're here. So I, I run through things like that in the morning. Why? It helps me. It's kind of like planning ahead. I know what I got to do. Oh, just do mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Versus what am I doing now? What am I doing now? <laughs> no, no. That's kind, of, t- that's kind of funny. Yes. I deal with people who got high blood pressure. And yeah. uh, usually when they say six hours, I have them for just one week to do yeah. uh, do eight hours for that whole week. And, and just, what's the difference did they say? It, well, they go back to normal. They go back, yeah, they go back to normal. A lot of people do that. And that's the reason yep. that that is, is because a lot of six, that, that six hours of sleep, sometimes people don't go to sleep until two hours into that. I know. You know, so yeah. they're not getting six hours of sleep. How, it, you, the amount of sleep that we get is equivalent yep. to the amount of REMs that we actually yep. get or the, di- the amount of uh, deep rest that we well, got. Well, I was saying what yep. was normal, though. Yeah, what was what normal? is normal? Uh, that's reason, the thing. You know. Normal is for you. Everybody's different, and you know that's why we have to again look at somebody and base any treatment on what we see because you know not everybody's the same. They put me on pills. Some people and go, I got "Hey, I sleep three hours a night, and I'm fine." And they tell me they're fine, and their pulses feel fine, their tongue looks fine. Okay, they're not pale, but somebody comes in and they tell me I'm sleeping 14 hours a day, and they're pale, they're sallow, you know, and they they have no muscle tone, and they're talking about, mm-hmm. "Oh, I have no energy." Then I'm thinking, you know, fibromyalgia, you know, mono. They've got some kind of, you know, energy energy issue, you know, health issue where, you know, they feel like crap. Right. You know, so okay, those people, you gotta, you know, oh, we gotta, we gotta get you guys up. We gotta, you know, increase your energy output. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. again, I look at it. I'm a mechanic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you're a highly functioning organic machine. If you're if you're getting a cold or a flu, what can I do? to tune tune you up so that you know it, you get rid of that or you you suffer as minimal time as possible again we've got to get the cold out of you we got to get the heat out of you we you know and we do that through acupuncture and herbs mm-hmm. you know people can take over the counter things you know a lot of people western herbs you've got echinacea and golden seal these mm-hmm. act almost mm-hmm. like antibiotics mm-hmm. you know so take them for 5 to 7 days Mm-hmm. You know, watch out. Echinacea can be very hard on your stomach. Golden seal can be very bitter, very, you know, and a lot of people, duh, dude. you know, listen to your body. Don't, you know, if you take something and it makes you nauseous, don't take it. You that's know, true. That's you true. might get sick. Your, your body might say, you know what? I don't like echinacea and golden seal, and that's okay. Mm. You but- know, there are so many things, so many formulas, you know, whether Western or Eastern. You know, a lot of people, they don't, they don't, they didn't know that Mucinex, you know, Mucinex is this, this, medication that helps with phlegm and mm-hmm. mucus. Mm-hmm. Well, it's based on an Indian herb that they used for, you know, uh, lung issues. Mm-hmm. It's just it's been synthesized and strengthened. So mucinex actually isn't a bad thing. You know, it's, it's not as bad because it's based on at least something from nature that, you know, and now they're using it, you know, in a, in a you know, standardized medic, you know, medication. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's funny how all medications that people kind of talk about come from nature somehow, and then they've found out the active chemical in the herb. 
then they synthesized it in the lab, they standardized it, and then put it into pill form, you know, uh, patch form, you know, injectable, whatever. Mm -hmm. Medications come in many different mediums, so it doesn't matter, you know. So to me, I can give you teas, I can give you pills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pills are easier, you don't taste anything. If I give you the herbs, you know, to make into a tea, you're probably not going to like me. You're probably going to call me and tell me bad things and call <laughs> me bad words. <laughs> It's it's hard for people to be compliant with Chinese herbs with the raw what we call raw herbs. You know, we give you a package of herbs and you're mm -hmm, gonna go make a tea mm -hmm, or a soup. Mm -hmm. It's easy to give somebody a pill or a capsule. They don't taste it, you know. So compliance is much is much better. So usually most people steer towards formulas that they'll have pills, capsules. Some will have the tea, but again. Westerners and herbs, they don't taste good. If something doesn't taste good, you're not going to take it. You're not going to be compliant. Mm -hmm. So we always try mm -hmm. to think of that if we're doing herbs that, you know, pills are easier, capsules are easier. So I go with that, uh, you know, to begin with. Yeah, that's definitely. But that's a lot of things. Again, we're on the topic of, uh, for those of you who are listening, we're on the topic of uh, Eastern approach to flus, uh, people who got colds, not to prevent your body from having, um, from catching colds or from being sick, etc. Uh, and we talked about the hot, cold, hot therapy, cold therapy. We went a little bit into about acupuncture and thing. But a big thing that people, um, what my what my uh, seafood, my instructor was teaching me was about sleep, and that's what uh, it hurts. Uh, that's what um, a lot of people's actually lacking on. Regardless of what uh, your body, your medicine doesn't heal your body. Your body heals the body. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. But the problem is, is that the mo your body does the most healing when you're sleeping. Yes. Okay. Therefore, if you're not getting quality sleep, yet the body ability to recharge itself the way it's supposed to, although you're not getting the proper internal energy that these medications need in order to work properly. So yep. you're going to be taking these medications, regardless of heart medication, uh, cold medication or whatever, twice as long because... You're not getting a deep enough sleep. So when any time that somebody has an issue, he will always say, how is your sleep? Get deeper amounts of sleep because that's what you do. When animals get hurt, they sleep. They rest. They let their body heal itself. And then that's the first thing. And then the second thing, you're getting enough water. Completely, yeah. completely your body's hydrated and everything. Third thing, are you eating right? Uh, you got all the necessary nutrients and everything because you could take the acupuncture and the medicines and everything, but if you don't have the proper material that the body needs in order to repair itself, it can't repair itself. You cannot build a brick house if you don't have any bricks. Just, just don't yeah. do what I do. Chicken soup. Eat, then go to chicken bed. Soup. <laughs> eat and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, chicken soup. Jewish, they, they call it Jewish penicillin to make a joke. Yeah, yeah. You know, chicken soup, and the, you've got protein. You've mm -hmm. got you know vitamins and minerals from the vegetables. You've got mm -hmm. liquid. It's been pre cooked. You can ingest it. It's very stressless. It's it's less chicken stressful soup. to absorb soup. Mm -hmm. So soups are incredible in the winter time or any time at all. You can have them in the summertime, but they're incredible because you can get lots of nutrients in your body very quickly, and your body can absorb them much better than if you're eating huge pieces of cow or, you know, or eating, mm -hmm. you know, lots and mm -hmm. lots of meat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, when you break it down. So that's why soups are just very nutritious because you're getting all the, you know, all the yummy goodness and, you know, the active components in the food into that liquid. So drink your liquid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eating, eating what's in the bowl is good, but the liquid, hey, you know, that's... Everything's I love up. soup. Yeah. And most people make soup when they're sick because they, okay. they're getting nauseous or their body can't, you know, absorb heavy meals. So, hey, let's have broth or, you know, chicken soup or whatever, turkey soup. Or yes, and then the, and getting that soup, getting nutrition. Fourth thing we find about is exercise or light exercise. The whole yeah. purpose of the Qigong and everything is our body works, Movement. the lymphatic yep. system works by moving it. So by you getting around, you're moving, every time you move your leg, you work the lymphatic system in your legs. Every time you move the arms, you move the lymphatic system in your arms, you move your torso, yep. you move the lymphatic system. You got to do some type of slow movement, not hard exercise, because hard exercise creates lactic acid, which yep. which actually goes against what you're trying to do. You want to yeah, just move around. Yep. Yeah, make yep. you feel worse. So you do about 20 to 30 minutes of light exercise, light non-stressful exercise, just yep. to get the fluids moving throughout the entire body yep. in order to kick out those pathogens yep. and everything that they can go through the skin and everything like they're supposed to. And yep. then yep. 
you go to, or even massage therapy is another way that they use in order to uh, work the lymphatic system in order to push, yep. push the uh, the toxins and stuff and through the skin. And then you look at the uh, taking the herbs and taking the medication and all that other type of stuff with that. Or else, because if you don't do that, the herbs and stuff will just sit. Okay. And you'll get some, but you won't get as much as if, if it was circulating no. throughout the yeah. whole body and stuff. So, yes, yeah. if you are sick or something, you might want to look into doing about uh, 20 minutes of Tai Chi or some type of light exercise. In yeah, order yoga. To yoga. It doesn't matter. Yoga. Yeah. You know, movement. Yeah. Movement. So that's how you can have somebody do 14 hours, be all tired and stuff, because they're not moving their body. And those no. viruses, those pathogens and everything is just sitting. Yeah. And you're wondering why you're just so tired. You're wondering why you're just so tired because you got to pull all that stuff. You got this body is nothing more than an elastic tube, full of full of liquids, and you got to yeah. keep those liquids circulating. And the only way that you can really keep those liquids circulating is actually is through, is through movement. Yeah. movement. You got yeah. You actually got to do that type of thing. And then you got to uh, yeah. just going back to what you eat. And it says, oh, I wonder why I'm tired all the time. I wonder why they're sick. And you got your big Pepsi in your hand. Yeah. You know, or McDonald's. You see him eating McDonald's or you Burger know? King or Wendy's or you know? whatever. Down here, it's Checkers. There's these little fast food places, and you know, Checkers is like a local institution. It's like they fry everything, mm -hmm. and you see people just mowing on stuff, big, huge buckets of soda, and I'm like, I hear you. I hear you. Hey, Dale. I don't. I can't eat that. Even now, even even when I'm healthy, eating mm -hmm. that kind of stuff makes me feel crappy. Yeah, what can we do in order to increase our uh, sleep, our REM? Um, usually, you you know, if you're looking at it from an herbal perspective, um, I try a lot of people out on chamomile tea, chamomile, passion flower, you know, sleepy time tea. There was, you know, from uh, Celestial Seasonings on Colorado. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of over-the-counter teas you can get that help, you know, relax you if you're having issues with relaxing. I like to put some people on magnesium. Magnesium helps to relax you. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Magnesium oil is great. You can spray it on your skin, mm -hmm, but some people mm -hmm. take it orally. Uh, if you're going to take it orally, I usually do a zinc, magnesium, and a calcium. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that combination is really good. Zinc, zinc, cal, and magnesium, and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they all work together to help relax you. The zinc helps kind of boost your immune system, boost your you know hormones. Uh, zinc, we need it. It's very high in oysters. That's why oysters are great for kind of a libido boost. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we look at libido in Chinese medicine as the kidney. So when the mm -hmm, kidney is mm -hmm. strong, you know, your hormones are strong. And when your hormones are strong, your libido is very strong. When your hormones are low and your kidney up, you know, and your kidneys are, are you know, the kidney energy is weak, then guess what? Your libido is low. So again, we look at symptoms. We mm. look at the person. If you're feeling sick, what's wrong? Are you hot? Are you cold? Are you achy? You have no energy. So we need mm -hmm. to get rid of the pathogen, get the heat, get the cold out, and then we have to increase your energy because usually you feel like crud. Mm -hmm. And then you know, try to do that using what? Well, there's many things, you know, and you don't sleep. Okay, there's teas you can try. You know, the melatonin, a lot of times people will take melatonin, which is a precursor for serotonin, that will help, you know, uh, stimulate a serotonin increase and that's what you get when you sleep so when your serotonin levels are high your your immune system is high your 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 hormone low so it's funny how our sleep regulates hormones and there's a again a direct correlation so we have to get enough rest so rest 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 yes the fuel Quality, what are you putting right. in yep. what are you eating you can't be eating junk food you know mm -hmm, you're, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, i mean mm -hmm. a little bit of course have a little ice cream you, you got a sore throat have a little ice cream right. you know good but eat six gallons of it no, no. you're gonna feel like crap Especially if yeah. you got mucus, uh, mucus. Oh yeah. yeah, dairy, dairy, dairy like makes gunk, mm -hmm. you know. And people know this, and most people know they they get to a point where all of a sudden they go, mm -hmm, then they're coughing all the time and they're producing more and more phlegm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They notice a correlation. So yeah, lots of cheese and ice cream. Watch out when you're mm -hmm. feeling bad. Sometimes it's just a mucus maker. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. What about constipation and getting sick? Constipation, it's very common. You get a fever and all of a sudden you, you get a dry stool and you can't get rid of it. So we, again, drain the heat and I can stimulate bowel movements through acupuncture points. We have protocols for this. Mm -hmm. You know, We have herbs I can give you. There's one herb, it's rhubarb root and salt. Let me, it's rhubarb root and salt. And you put mm -hmm. those together and cook them into a tea and you drink this stuff and guess what? It's a magnesium salt. What does magnesium do? Magnesium relaxes. Mm -hmm. It's going to relax your colon and you're going to have colon blow. 
Mm. <laughs> okay, that's but good. This is, you know, if you get really constipated, in other words, you, you haven't had a bowel movement in a week, you're going to feel like, you know, you're going to feel really, really irritable. You're not going to be a happy camper. So giving you the rhubarb root and salt, this purging action, you know, it softens and, and opens up. You're going to, you know, it's going to cause a very chaotic response, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're going to feel better because it's it's basically opened up your bowel movement back to normal. Yeah, they say in a lot of times that death starts in the colon. Yep. And I make a joke when I network out and I meet networking groups or I meet other people. I say, hey, I'm Dale Dugas. I'm an acupuncturist. I can make you poop better. I can make you sleep better. And it's a joke, but... <laughs> a lot of times I'm seeing people who are coming in or having constipation issues or they're having loose stool issues or diarrhea. Mm-hmm. Other people, they can't sleep. They can't get to sleep or they can't stay asleep or, you know, they have insomnia, mm-hmm. you know, and from a, a wide variety of, of situations. So I'm, lo- I'm always looking at a wide cross-section of people and they're dealing with rest issues, rest, energy, and sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we have to ad- I have to address these. If they're not sleeping, i got to get them to sleep. And so, okay, induce sleep. I've got points for that. I've had people call me the next day and say, oh, my God, I slept like a baby. I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, well, thank you. You know, it, it's not me. It's the acupuncture, and you had the response. I was just your assistant. You know, I just put the needles in, but I didn't do anything. You did. You know, people have to understand that Asian medicine, Chinese medicine is all about this teamwork. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, just, I'm just doing a little bit of work to stimulate a response for you, you're actually mm-hmm. having the healing response. Mm-hmm. It's not me. I don't tell people what's going to happen. I don't say, hey, this is all going to do this, this, and this. No. Okay. I say, what's wrong? Uh, Go through you... what's wrong, mm-hmm. take their pulses, look at their tongue. Okay, I'm going to put these points in. I'll see you in half an hour. And then I leave the room and let them, you know, and all of a sudden they start having a response to, you know, what's going on depending on what points are used. You know, do I need to drop their fever? Do I need to warm them up? Do I need to put a heat lamp on their belly? When people come in and they're cold and they're shivering and they're blue, you know, mm-hmm. they're blue or white, mm-hmm. I have a heat lamp, an infrared heat lamp that I put over their abdomen and heat them up, and guess what? They feel good mm-hmm. because they're cold. Mm-hmm. If you're cold, I'm going to heat you up. If you're mm-hmm. hot, I'm going to cool you. It, it sounds simple, but an application, it's a science, you know, because sometimes is. people are, are a combination. you got to know, okay, I can't cool you off too much, mm-hmm. then you're going to mm-hmm. get sicker. And you, I can't heat up too much because it might make that fever worse. You know, mm-hmm. so again, mm-hmm. it's always about balance. You know, about balance, balance in everything. Mm-hmm. Everything in daily life, in health, and in training, and in you know thinking. Mm-hmm. Always think. You know, try to be open-minded, but don't think in extremes. Think about you're going to react to whatever you know situation is, and and be a little more balanced because you don't know. I don't know if I'm going to treat for cold or for heat until it manifests in front of me, mm-hmm. and then you go from there. That's true. Um, Dale, what is the normal transit from the time that somebody eats something to the time it exits outside the body? What should be the normal time? That's, you know, that's a big question because over over a period of time, I had a lot of patients come in and I, I would ask them, hey, how are your bowel movements? You know, how many times do you go a day? And sometimes it wasn't, well, it wasn't how many times do I go a day, but how many times do I go in a week? <laughs> and they would tell me, you know, and I'm like, five times in a week, I go, okay, um, you know, do you have, you know, I talk, and usually these people have energy issues or they, you know, they mm-hmm. feel kind of, bleh, they feel very heavy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, not very energetic. And, you know, they're thinking, you know, sometimes there's depression involved and it's very interesting that they're just kind of, bleh, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. and their, their facial expressions are kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're looking depressed. And so... We get them to poop. I increase the circulation in the colon. I, I strengthen the colon. I strengthen the stomach and spleen. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. they call me up and they go, oh, my God, I've pooped five times today. And I go, that's okay. You know, as many times as you need to, you know, keep the body. If it's garbage, you don't need it. You, exactly. you need to get rid of it. So peeing and pooping, you know, some people get really grossed out. It's not about being gross. We're, we're, mm-hmm. we're dealing with you need to get rid of the toxic, you know, junk and garbage in your body. You know, ammonia, you're, you're getting rid of certain, you know, when you're peeing, that's why pee has that smell. There's, there's things we don't need in our kidneys. we got to get them out. Yes. It's you know, it's the filtering system. You're yeah. filtering out all the stuff your body doesn't need, and then we need to excrete it. And so it's concentrated. It's, you know, anywhere from straw colored to, you know, it could be dark colored, mm-hmm. hopefully not blood, you know, or, or anything else in there. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, again, it's funny how I'm going to ask you, hey, how many times do you pee a day? You know, how many times do you poop a day? 
How and many I, times you know, there is no there is no right answer. I right, mean, most right. people it's anywhere between one and four bowel movements, and that's like the window. Mm -hmm, You've mm -hmm. got people on the low end once a day, and that's great. Once a day, hey, that's good. Right. But if you can eat a meal, they say if you can eat a meal and then defecate two hours later, they say your digestion is you know good to go. Remote. You know that it, uh, one show I was doing it's for parasitic eggs. Uh, yeah. This thing is about 23 hours, so you want whatever meal that you eat out of the system. Yes, you them. want it, you know, as quickly as possible. But some people have what we call a slow gut. You mm -hmm. know, they've got a they've got a a colon that doesn't work at optimal levels, and so guess what? This stuff is sitting in you longer. It has time to incubate, and guess what? Now you've got parasites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, we could have a we could do that on another show on how you know uh, Asian medicine or just medicine in general deals with parasites. You know, I don't want to gross anybody out. That's you know. <laughs> It, the, we show them pictures and people are going to have the willies and you know oh my god that's you know the, the, the idea of that is just you know mind boggling for some people mm -hmm. but think about it whether it's a parasite or whether you got hot or cold wind into your body it's an invasion right you know the pathogen is kind of it's not a parasite but it's something that's invaded your body and it's trying to take over and you know it's trying to live and it, it's messing up with you and it's causing you to have you know chaotic you know symptoms you might have nausea. You might not have nausea. You know, you might have a sore throat. You might have a runny nose. You might have a stuffy nose, watery eyes. You know, itchy eyes. You know, you could itch. You could have. I had a patient mm -hmm. come in every time they got the flu. They'd they'd have hives. They'd mm -hmm. have this rea mm -hmm. you know allergic mm -hmm. reaction with mm -hmm. big, big hives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Treated them, gave them some herbs, went away. He so, had heat trapped in his skin, so we got wow. rid of the. We opened the skin, opened the pores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He he went back to his baseline. He went back to normal. You know, again, we treat what you see. If it's hot, we're gonna cool it down. If it's cold, we're gonna warm it up. And if it's a little bit of both, then we're gonna do. We're gonna again very slowly or very g gradually try to balance it out so that the mm -hmm. person gets mm -hmm. better as quickly as possible. It's all about the results. It's all about the patient's results. If I don't give somebody a treatment that causes a healing response, they're not gonna come back to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm always bringing the A game. It's always we gotta you know. Boom, 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 you know, mm -hmm. I've got to bring it. So it's a little bit of pressure, but at the same time, mm -hmm. I understand how these people feel because we've all been sick. We've all been mm -hmm. in the situation where it's like, ah, I feel junky, mm -hmm. you know, and my rule is as long as I don't have a fever, I'll go to work. If I feel crappy and achy and sore, it's okay. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes when I train really hard, I feel the same way. I'm a, it's like your body is, you know, trying to adapt to the, the stress you put on it mm -hmm. by what, mm -hmm. by lifting or pulling or you know, it doesn't matter if you're doing judo or jujitsu or if you're doing football or baseball, you're working your body from all these different angles, mm -hmm. you know, through a range of motion, you know, in different, you know, situations. Hey, guess what? Your muscles are going to get sore. Mm -hmm. You're going to mm -hmm. get achy. That means you're alive. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how people go, am I supposed to feel like this? I'm like, well, what'd you do? And they said, well, I did, you know, like 600 body weight squats. Wow. And they're like, well, I, I hope you feel the muscles in your thighs after doing that many squats. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. How about you try 10 next time or 20 or, you know, let's do sets of 10 and, you know, do two and work your way up. And why'd you do 600? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't okay. Know you know, but when people too. come in and sick, they just come in and they go, I feel like crap. That is. Okay. So one thing that we need to do in order to increase our immune system is to make sure that we're having regular colon movements at least one to four yes. times a day. And Usually. You know, yeah. that's the window. That's the window. And so if we're eating six meals a day, how many times should we take a poop? It all depends because if you're eating six meals a day, they're usually smaller. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they might even be liquid, you know, like protein drinks. And those will be assimilated into the body. And there's not a lot of refuse. There's not a lot of residue left over in your colon. No, let's so again, not even say, depending let's on say, what you're eating, I, I eat very similar. I eat smaller meals. Mm -hmm. I eat, you know, nuts, berries, you know, uh, dried fruits. Mm -hmm. So I'm eating minimal and I'll have a protein drink here and there and then have a meal or two. And I'm doing between one and three bowel movements. So again, I think it depends on what I'm eating and how, how easily it's either digested, assimilated, and then expelled. Because okay. I think the higher the fat content, the slower it takes to digest it. Okay. You know? So when you eat high fat, you know, high protein, high fat, your body actually, it takes a little while versus carbohydrates can be digested and assimilated very quickly. That's why we need them for recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, you just expended all this energy. Hey, let's get some carbs back in here and, and basically get our blood sugar level back up. Okay, looking at it, we guess the time now is 8.09. Uh, yep. Show's over with at 2015. Um, 
go over the most important things that we need to do in order uh, to keep our immune system strong and if we got the um, if we are sick uh, things that we need to do in the past well, in, the, in these next five minutes basically you need to look and figure out what's going on if you're not getting enough rest you have to get rest you've got to get off your feet you don't have to sleep but at least get off your feet turn the lights off don't read don't watch TV don't you know don't be on the internet Get in bed, at least get rest, because your body needs rest. So whatever you can do to get rest. That's why NyQuil, NyQuil is, they sell a lot of NyQuil. Why? It knocks you on your butt. It's like 20% alcohol. So you take a hit of NyQuil, it's got, it's got you know, Benadryl in it. And so it's got this, you know, alcohol and Benadryl. And Benadryl and alcohol make you very drowsy, so it knocks you out. So when you take the NyQuil, it knocks you out your sleep. Guess what? You feel good because you got sleep. You got rest. Mm -hmm. So if I can do that without putting people on NyQuil, very good. You're good to go. How do you do that? Just taking chamomile tea? Well, chamomile can help, but again, there's formulas I can give you that help deal with, you know, whatever, you know, there's, there's herbs I can give you for the cold and then acupuncture points to help you sleep. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the herbs will just relax you anyway because, you know, it's dealing with the cold symptoms and your body's like, okay, I don't need to deal with this. I've got some help. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got some assistance from the herbs. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. that's what it is. The herbs are assisting the body. Mm -hmm. Your body knows what to do to fix it, but the herbs kind of give it, like, extra help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And so if you don't use herbs, well, you're going to get there eventually, but nothing wrong with, you know, boostering something and, you know, hey, this can help you get there faster. Okay, you know what great. I'm saying. Yeah, it's you know, no like side effects. It's herbs. It's just it's natural. You know, it's plants. It's mm -hmm. not anything synthetic. So you're not going to take these herbs and then go, you know, toot toot like you know Popeye and you no. Know, it's you're going to take them I and mean, over a period of time you're going to notice, hey, I feel better. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's not you know they're not like prescription medications that you take them and you can have effects very quickly because they're very strong. Okay. But basically, you got to get your you got to get your immune system up by resting. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself warm if you get wet. You mm -hmm. need to get dry as soon as possible. The human body, when you get wet and cold, mm -hmm. you're out running, you're out training in the rain, you're running in the Spartan warrior race. Hey, you're, did you on the mud warrior run? Hey, that's great. But once you stop running and stop heating your body up, you got to get dry as quickly as possible. And you got to, you know, because your pores are open, you're wet. This is when the wind, this is when they call it evil chi, evil wind comes mm -hmm. in and, you know, you, you get this pathogen invading your body. And then it either goes hot or cold. And you have the hot or cold symptoms. So, if you get wet, get dry. If you get cold, get warm. Mm -hmm. Wear scarves. Wear hats. Wear gloves. If you live in cold places in the you know wherever you live, make sure you're dressed accordingly. If you don't dress, you're gonna get sick. You know, stress. Try to lower it. Try to lower your stress. You know, work, family, money, politics, religion. Yeah, those 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 mm -hmm. get your stress levels up there. Mm -hmm. But something like reishi mushroom or St. John's works good. Reishi can help, but if it's something you want to take way before you get sick. If you get sick, you do not want to take those kind of things. It actually can push things in deeper. Mm -hmm. You know, What you want to do is when you're sick, you need to open things up and get out. So you yeah. want spice. You want pepper. You want ginger. You want mm -hmm. garlic. Garlic is great. Garlic is a natural antibiotic. Mm -hmm. But you got to eat it raw. Yeah, you do. So either get the the whole cloves and chop them up, or you know get that pre chopped garlic. It's raw, and I when I'm sick, dude, I take about a teaspoonful. Yeah, it keeps the bugs away too. The bugs and the mosquitoes down here, they don't like that. So you know, <laughs> I won't get sick, and I and the mosquitoes don't bug me. So yay yeah, for get that. Get rid of the sand fleas. <laughs> you know, so that I don't know. I don't go to the beach much. You know, I'm I'm whiter than white. I I burn. So I, I I get my 15 minutes of sunshine, and then I'm like I get undercover because you know. Okay. All right, that's definitely it. All right, anything else you'd like to add? We got two more minutes left. It, again, if you're if you're suffering or if you wanted, to, you know, try Chinese medicine and acupuncture, you know, feel free to contact me at dealdugas.com. I offer you know treatments at two clinics here in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, I've got friends all around the country and all around the world. If you're looking for a referral, let me know. I will try to find somebody in the area that can help you, whether with acupuncture, herbs, or both. And, you know, again, I'm at your service, so please let me know how I can be of service. And I, I thank you for the opportunity for, you know, sharing a little bit of what I know. And Wow, man, and that was just a little bit. Thanks, Dale. <laughs> hey, my pleasure, man. It's what I'm here for. I hear you. All right, this is Malik L. Train, host of Health Awareness Talk with my guest today, Arm Palm Master Dale Dugas. Everyone, have a wonderful day.